So I think we have um, one more quick poll here to, to take. That's right. Please go ahead and enter your vote for poll question number four. Is your organization using any network visibility or intelligent aggregation or network access management solution now? It, now is also the time for you to enter any questions that you would like us to answer at the end if you haven't already. Just a quick time check. Uh, we will stop at 10.45 to start answering any questions from the live audience. And for those of you who uh, wanted a copy of this presentation, and if you have not already, you can email me, the moderator, Anna Duong, that's A-N-N-A -N -N -A dot D-U-O-N-G at VSS monitoring dot com with subject line Bright Talk March 19. PPT. I will okay. also re-enter my email address in the message box at 1045, so you can um, have the correct email address from there, too. It looks like the voting has stabilized, uh, Gordon, so let us view the results now. The question, yeah, so once is again, your, is, is your organization, yeah, is your organization using, using any, any yeah, network sorry, visibility? Intelligent Aggregation Network Access Management Solution now. We have 73% of the audience answering yes and 27% of the audience answering no. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's uh, very, very pleasing to see that um, the people have recognized, um, a very large percentage of the people have uh, recognized the need for this and uh, are actually uh, using, using these types of solutions already. And, uh, and so that, that that is that is very good. Yeah, thanks, Anna. We'll move on to the next slide. So um, this is another another representation of, um, of enabling a data center to really scale for more visibility. Uh, it's just extending on what I was talking about before. So if you want full visibility from end to end, and in a lot of cases that is what's required. You're not always just be concerned about one end of your network. You really want to see what's going on from one end to the other and being able to track uh, the performance as well as um, security at, at certain points within that network. And, um, you know, the, the various different types of tools that do exist already, um, you can actually utilize them. You don't necessarily have to buy um, new ones but you can make use of existing tools you have in place if you need to expand the capacity of the traffic that you need to monitor uh, for a different type of um, aspect, different type of traffic, different, um, different need in terms of security or performance, then obviously you can, you can add more instances of those tools as you need. Uh, but using the network packet broker system of devices, you can actually bring all the traffic from the various points in the network from one end to the other, and so that selectively send the specific um, uh, elements of that traffic to the tools that you want to monitor. Now, if you've got tools that want to look at one end only, then you can obviously selectively only send the traffic from that end. But if you need it from across the entire network, uh, you want one tool to see how, say, a, a specific session is performing uh, from one end to the other, then you can also uh, make sure that uh, the single instance of the tool sees that all of those um, all of those captures from the various points that you need to uh, to see that across all at the same time. This really highlights the the power of using uh, a network packet broker solution that that it functions as one system because it, it allows the user to arbitrarily say at any time I need to take traffic from this specific point in my network and move it over and copy it or send it to a specific tool uh, that I have that's, that's designed for monitoring the one specific aspect um, that I'm looking for. And, and I can make that change at any time I need to. And, I, and because I've already got this system built up, I don't actually have to go in and do much of a, um, a change uh, management or change control function. The only need 
I would ever have to really go in and make a significant change to my infrastructure would be if I have to increase uh, the scale of my monitoring uh, in terms of such as adding multiple extra links, uh, maybe increase in network speed, uh, things like that, link speeds, uh, or maybe adding an additional monitoring device at those times, then maybe I need to make some kind of a change to my infrastructure. Otherwise, um, I, I probably don't have to do that. And, um, and another thing that uh, people often don't, don't think about, um, but this is very, very applicable in inline active monitoring situations, is that when organizations are still uh, either planning to or considering putting in an inline uh, security solution, uh, quite often uh, they may, one, be a little bit reticent to, to do an inline active monitoring solution um, and they might be comfortable with having an out-of-band monitoring solution. And then when they're more comfortable with the products that they're using, then they can switch them to inline. So as an example, you could have an intrusion protection system uh, that you want to purchase and, uh, and, and have operating on your network, but you're still not completely convinced that they're fail-safe. So by putting an inline active uh, network packet broker in, in, in the network, at a single point into that particular uh, each each particular segment that you want to monitor, you can then connect in your uh, intrusion protection system, run it as an IDS to start with, so it's just passively monitoring what's going on in the network, and so therefore cannot introduce a, a potential uh, risk to your network operation. And then, when you're more comfortable and satisfied with how that tool is going along and detecting events and and um, uh, detecting uh, security risks, then you can switch it over to the IPS inline mode, and just by changing the how how you configure the uh, the network packet broker that you've got in place, now that tool will then sit in line, and and that can be done very quickly and almost seamlessly. You could even be in a situation where you you're actually weighing up a number of different uh, vendors uh, that. For, the, for one particular type of monitoring aspect, and it could be an IPS vendor, as an example. And so you say, okay, I, I'm, I'm not totally convinced that one is that much better than another, uh, but I'd like to try them out. So by having your inline active uh, network packet broker in the network already, you can then plug and play uh, with these different types of um, or different vendors for the same tool type and try one versus another and you can rely on the network packet broker that's being used to, um, to uh, allow the traffic to continue to flow through your network work while you're actually swapping these tools in and out. It will also test the um, test for the, the health of those tools that you're trialing or doing a proof of concept on. And, and therefore, if one of them does malfunction, uh, the network packet broker will actually detect that and bypass that tool altogether. So it gives you a lot more flexibility of trying out different um, different tool types and and even weighing up one vendor versus another without affecting the operation of your network. So giving giving a lot of fail safety into how you um, how you do security monitoring and uh, more importantly how you actually go about approaching inline inline active uh, monitoring. So to conclude, um, you know, that using, using network packet brokers is a, is a huge improvement for, for data centers. It um, allows you to optimize your security, allows you to um, provide the, the data and the forensics that you require to the tools in a more efficient manner and allow your tools to run in a more efficient manner. It gives you uh, full end-to-end -end visibility um, for all the links and all the traffic that you need to monitor. So you don't have any blind spots, um, and 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 more more advanced types of um, network packet brokers also have the ability to mitigate um, uh, the loss of uh, traffic that could happen as a result of aggregation where you've got burstiness on your network. Uh, they're able to mitigate uh, the burstiness 
that can result in oversubscription of, uh, of the ports that are going into monitoring devices and, and therefore uh, minimize even more um, your blind spots uh, effectively to zero. And so adding the, the optimization of the, of the actual traffic and, and the tools efficiency as well as bringing full visibility across all the links and from end to end in your network, you're now improving your, um, your ability for your IT to respond to performance or security issues uh, that actually are detected or maybe trends are being detected in your network. Um, so this is obviously uh, a very positive um, uh, solution uh, that any uh, performance or, um, or security monitoring uh, organization should be looking at. And preferably, obviously, for some, a lot of companies, having the performance monitoring and the security monitoring people working together as a team to have one security solution in place uh, to serve both needs of, of both organizations. I'd like to thank everybody for, uh, for listening to this um, presentation. I hope it was uh, useful. So, All um, right. Uh, it's, it's time for our Q&A. I see that we have three questions from the live audience. Gordon, let it give us um, a few more minutes so the rest of the audience could answer their questions. And uh, uh, so I see the first question is about the, the voting. Um, for some reason, question one wasn't really presented as a, uh, a votable question. Not sure of the reason for that. That's where we, the question was asked about how well aligned are your network operations and security operations. Um, yeah, it's a shame we, uh, we couldn't collect uh, poll results on that one. Yes, um, that must be a, a hitch in the system. We will look into that and improve for the next one. We also have a suggestion from the audience about the presentation slide in the attachment. That was a great suggestion in future Bright Talk webcasts. Uh, we will upload the presentation in PDF format ahead of time so you can download them. Since we're mentioning attachments, um, we, are, we attach several attachments for the audience to download. First off is a, an e-book on network packet brokers for those who are not familiar with the technology yet. Uh, second is a research paper done by Enterprise Management Associate about best practices for mainstreaming monitoring fabrics, um, written by Jim Frey. Third is a case study on high availability for malware protection done with our partner FireEye. And Last but not least is a uh, product brief about a uh, product that now could do a uh, passive tap uh, for 40 gig networks and beyond. Okay. Uh, uh, I noticed one point, uh, it says, Anna, would you please zoom into this slide? I'm not sure exactly which slide that was. Uh, yes, that must be. Uh, we will send out the presentation and make the presentation available as attachments. So uh, those of you who have not emailed me, um, you can also go back into this webcast and download the attachment after the call too. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and answer your questions and give us a rating uh, with some feedback so we can improve for future webcasts. And we'll give the audience a few more minutes. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah, actually, while while, while we're waiting, um, the one of the one of the, the key aspects of actually building out um, building out a system of network packet brokers, um, sort of in addition to what I was talking about, is around um, uh, being. It's, it's, I sort of touched on it, but it is about having. Um, an, an automated uh, system that is able to automatically detect uh, when, uh, say, interconnection links go down or if power goes down on a particular device, they're able to automatically detect that and understand the topology of the network packet broker um, uh, system to then automatically provide the high availability and resiliency of 
delivery of your traffic from from the network all the way to the, actually each of the tools that you that you're using to monitor those parts of the network. Um, and that's a that's a key thing that needs to function uh, regardless of whether you've got a management um, a management system in place to to monitor what's going on. But sometimes those management interconnections are not always uh, up and running uh, towards your infrastructure. So therefore, as long as the devices themselves have an, uh, an automated way to uh, detect and uh, take action um, to get a, work around a problem and then even recover when, uh, when those um, situations or those problems um, recover, uh, then, then that's, that's what needs to be built into the, uh, into the network packet broker uh, system. Okay, uh, I have another question from the audience asking for my email address again for the PowerPoint. I have went ahead and entered that in the message box. Uh, very good. Yeah, the, um, hopefully my, my presentation and my explanations were, were fairly clear. I uh, haven't seen any uh, really meaty question yet, but um, I, I'm, I'm eager to receive one if there is one out there. That's right, Gordon. Uh, the audience can also email us with any questions. Uh, feel free to email it to me, and I will make sure that someone from our team uh, get back to you about your questions. Uh, it looks like we don't have any more uh, presentation-related questions from the audience, so I would like to take this time and thank everyone for your time and for attending. Uh, we really value your rating and feedback so that we can improve on uh, future webcasts, um, any topic that you would like to hear about, or how we can make um, help uh, increase your knowledge about network packet brokers and uh, data center architectures. Feel free to send us those suggestions or comments. And this webcast is available after uh, the event as well, and I will also upload the presentation uh, into the attachment, so you can either email me to get one or go back into our channel to obtain it. Uh, I saw one more question uh, yes, entering. Yeah, so this is a question that's specifically targeted to um, VSS Monitoring's um, network packet broker solutions. So the questions are around um, uh, what is the, the price per port? Well, it's obviously going to vary depending on uh, the type of network speed that, you, um, that you're actually accessing. So if it's a 100 gig uh, network, then obviously expect a, a particular price report on that. And then if it's a 1 gig, you'll expect a much lower um, price report. Um, the, I think that the best idea is to actually contact um, uh, or actually reach out and we'll, we'll get some to, someone to answer that question um, uh, who's, who's handling uh, your, your particular uh, account and, um, and they can give you a, a more accurate answer for the particular application that you have. But I can say that um, the price per port uh, that we do have on our products is uh, extremely competitive and, uh, and, and I'm sure it will meet, uh, meet your um, budgeting needs. Okay, uh, that is it. We don't have any more questions. Thank you again, everyone. And uh, if yeah, you have you. any questions after the event, you can still also email me. Uh, once again, thank you, Gordon, for such a great yeah. session. And yeah, thank uh, you, we're giving that nine minutes of your time. Yeah. Goodbye. And thanks to everybody else for listening. Bye.